This video will discuss long-term fire retardants and their mixing and application methods for utility asset protection from wildfire. Safety considerations will also be discussed. Pre-treating wooden utility poles and utility infrastructure with FOSCheck LC95A long-term retardant has proven very effective in preventing ignition and subsequent damage from wildland fires. Valuable resources such as wooden utility poles and utility infrastructure can be protected from damage by applying long-term fire retardant. Considerations prior to initiating pretreatment to poles. Safety of personnel. Size of fire. Proximity of fire to the work area. Fire behavior. Weather conditions. Vegetation or fuel type. Estimated time of arrival of the flaming front to the treatment area fire and law enforcement agency approvals for application personnel access, access and traffic issues associated with evacuees and agency responders, proper safety equipment and personal protective equipment, PPE, for hazards at risk. Safety is always a priority. Misuse or improper application of chemicals can result in serious injury to utility workers and firefighters. The use of personal protective equipment, PPE, may be required for many ground application scenarios. Operations in or near the fire ground can become unsafe because of rapidly changing conditions that often occur during wildland fire. Other hazards in and around the fire area can put application personnel at risk as well. Inexperienced personnel can suddenly find themselves in danger. FOSCheck LC95 is a long-term fire retardant that is available to utilities, homeowners, and landowners for reliable fire protection. The use of long-term retardant to pre-treat various wooden improvements, such as wood power poles, wooden guard rail posts, sheds, fences, fence posts, wood piles, and other types of wooden improvements, has been proven effective in preventing ignition and reducing losses. Applying retardant to the perimeter fuels around utility substations, switch yards, and valve lots can prevent a fire from entering the area, resulting in the protection of utility equipment and infrastructure. Long-term retardants should be applied to structures only as a last resort. If this should be necessary, the retardant should be rinsed off the structure with a high-pressure washer after the fire has passed. Long-term retardants do not require water to be effective, they remain effective after the water has evaporated. The pretreatment utilizing long-term retardant will remain effective for months unless removed by rain. The performance of any product depends on proper mixing procedures achieving the desired mix ratio, or the amount of concentrate per unit water. Performance also depends on the proper viscosity, salt content, and application at the proper coverage level. So what do fire chemicals do? Long-term fire retardant consists primarily of ammonium phosphates and other functional components. The long-term retardant chemically alters the combustion decomposition process of wildland fuels by reducing flammable gases and vapors and increasing the production of char and water vapor. Ignition of chemically treated fuels will either be delayed or prevented. Fire intensity and rate of spread will be reduced resulting in increased safety for those working on the fire line. Phosphate-based long-term fire retardants chemically change the way cellulosic fuels decompose when burning, thereby reducing the rate of spread and the availability of fuel with or without the presence of water. The carbon char insulates the fuel surface and the water vapor provides cooling that reduces combustion. Since long-term retardants work chemically, they do not rely on the presence of water to function. They are effective, wet or dry. Foams and gel or water enhancers, on the other hand, rely on the water they contain to be effective. They don't chemically alter the combustion process. Once dry, they are no longer effective. The ground-applied method of long-term retardant offers some distinct advantages. The application is more uniform and accurate. Ground application is not subject to restrictions due to darkness, weather, smoke, etc. Long-term retardant can be applied with back pumps, UTVs with pumps and poly tanks, garden sprayers, water tenders, hydro mixers, and fire engines. This can allow for more flexibility in the pre-treating of the poles ahead of the fire. 
Phoscheck LC95 long-term retardant is available to utility companies in red or iron oxide, fugitive, which will fade over time, and uncolored, all depending on the specific needs. Specific guidelines for mixing Phoscheck LC95 long-term retardant liquid concentrate must be followed at all times. The solids in LC95 concentrate will settle in storage over time, much like a pail of house paint. The liquid concentrate will need to be mixed thoroughly by shaking vigorously or agitating the 5-gallon pail. If larger liquid concentrate containers, such as the 260-gallon tote or 55-gallon barrels are utilized, a mixing system will need to be used to ensure the liquid concentrate is well mixed prior to mixing with the water. At this point, pour one part Phoscheck LC95 long-term retardant liquid concentrate with 5.5 parts water. Mix thoroughly. This will result in the proper consistency, viscosity, and salt content and meet the manufacturer's specifications. Strategy and tactics apply to application crews in the same way they apply to firefighting personnel. The strategy is to prevent losses to infrastructure from wildfire. Tactics, on the other hand, deal with the how-to, where to treat, when to treat, the number of personnel involved in treatment, and the types and numbers of application equipment are all parts of tactics. The fire itself dictates the tactics. If the wildfire is close at hand and moving at a high rate of speed, you may have insufficient resources and time to both remove vegetation and treat the infrastructure with long-term fire retardant. When this is the case, proceed treating the utility poles, infrastructure, and the vegetation surrounding the poles with long-term fire retardant. If, on the other hand, the wildfire is further away and moving at a slower rate of speed, you may have time to both remove vegetation and treat the infrastructure with long-term fire retardant. When this is the case, do both. In either case, crews will need to make sure it's safe and prioritize their application locations. Prior to applying product, be sure to check the area. Look up, look down, look around for any hazards or unsafe conditions that may exist. It's important for the safety of personnel pre-treating with long-term fire retardant to keep the product a safe distance from the energized electrical equipment. Spraying solution in close proximity to energized electrical equipment could cause a path to ground, touch step potential, and or contaminate the electrical equipment. Applying the retardant. Facing the pole, stand 10 to 15 feet from the pole base. Utilizing the fog spray nozzle, adjust to about a one to three foot wide pattern. Open nozzle. Begin spraying a light mist in a sweeping motion up the pole from your location. Continue spraying up the pole approximately 12 to 20 feet or greater, depending on vegetative fuel height and density. In the same sweeping motion, continue spraying back down the pole to the ground where you're standing. Close nozzle. This will provide a light coating of long-term retardant to the pole. A spray wand type tip may be utilized. This may require personnel applying retardant to be closer to the pole. In either a clockwise or counterclockwise path around the pole, continue this spraying technique until the entire 360 degree circumference of the pole has been adequately treated. This will allow you to cover the entire circumference and all surface areas of the pole to the desired height. Spray any untreated areas on the ground to a distance of 6 to 8 feet or greater around the base of the pole. Inspect the pole and surrounding area to see if adequate long-term retardant is applied. Treat any area that may not be covered by spraying that area. Remember, for your safety and the safety of others, keep the product a safe distance from the energized electrical equipment. The area on the ground may be slippery from the long-term retardant. Use caution walking in and around the treated areas. Move to the next pole and repeat the application steps. The pole treatment can be accomplished with other equipment such as backpack pumps or garden sprayers. As shown here, this equipment can be used for those few poles that might have limited access. Keep in mind that proper retardant solution coverage is best achieved with a fog pattern, somewhat similar to using an airless paint sprayer rather than a straight stream. A wood pole severely checked or weathered may require additional retardant application, especially in the areas of deep checking and cracks. Even though the poles have been treated, there are some situations in which ignition could still occur. 
These situations are primarily due to improper mixing, improper application of the product to the pole and surrounding vegetation, damage or checking of the pole, or heavy fuel loading of vegetation in close proximity to the poles. After the treatment and the fire has burned through the area, and once the area has been declared safe and access is approved by the appropriate agency, return to the treated sites and check for smoldering poles or vegetation. Mop up and extinguish as necessary. Use caution and be aware of additional overhead or ground hazards resulting from the fire, that is, ash pits, falling trees or limbs, electrical lines and or poles, or equipment that may have been compromised by the fire. The cleanup of equipment. Upon completion, pre-treatment equipment, pump and tank units should be thoroughly flushed with fresh water to remove leftover retardant from the system. A triple rinse system is standard procedure in the industry. For questions or additional information on ground applied FOSCHEC LC95 long-term fire retardant on utility infrastructure, go to FOSCHEC.com.